Hi, it's JC and welcome to Small Brick City. Today we'll be looking at the Ninjago City, a beautiful Lego set. And we're going to see how I fit it into my Lego City. So here we go. The Ninjago City set is a beautiful set. It's intricate. There's so many details, multiple stories. And, you know, I really think this is one of the best modular buildings that Lego has produced, even though it's not really part of the modular range, but it is a corner unit and you can integrate it into a Lego town. Maybe it is because I'm Asian, so I can relate to this type of building. It really looks like a cluttered mall that you might expect to find in a Chinatown. Many different stalls of different kinds all mashed together in one single building. And that basically is what this Ninjago city is. But because it's so unique or it's a very distinct Asian style, it's very different from the other modular buildings that Lego has produced. This makes it challenging to put it into a Lego city. The sheer size itself also makes it a challenge because it's the tallest building currently available from Lego, not counting mocks, of course. So if you put it together with a bunch of modelers, it may seem out of place. Well, let me show you how I placed it into my Lego city so that it integrates well and I think fairly seamlessly. I utilized two techniques to counter the size or the height of the Ninjago city. The first technique was to place it next to an open area, or at least one side of the building faced an open area. This meant it wasn't sandwiched between two smaller buildings, which would then show off the contrast of the extreme height of the building and make it tower over the rest. By placing one side of the Ninjago city over an open space, in this case, my town square and park, there's no direct contrast, so it looks like it fits in. The second technique I used was to create levels in my city. In my main city display, my main street is actually on a higher level, and this is about one story high. The entire main street is therefore raised up, and this main street includes very tall buildings such as the Town Hall, Grand Emporium, and Fire Brigade. As a result, they are taller than the Ninjago City, so the Ninjago City building doesn't have a chance to tower over all the buildings in the city. These two techniques allow me to integrate the Ninjago city seamlessly in my brick city without sticking out like a sore thumb. To help the Ninjago city blend in even more, I placed it with another corner building, in this case, the Palace Cinema. That is because the Palace Cinema also has an Asian style design. So when the two buildings are placed together, they look visually similar and they look like they can go together as a single block. This gives a kind of visual uniformity in this block or section of town. And because I place both of these buildings at one corner of my display or one end of my display, it also does not stick out in the center of the city. Now let's have a look at some of the modifications I did to blend the Ninjago city into my brick town. The first thing that I did was to build physical connectors connecting my Ninjago city to the rest of my brick town. The Ninjago city sits on a bed of water, so you will have to find a way to give logic and find a way to integrate this water element into your city. In my case, the front of the city actually leads into the sea or a beach front. Therefore, the water from the Ninjago city technically flows into the sea, but you have to use your imagination as it flows off the front of my display. However, one side faces my town hall park, so what I did was to build a retaining wall on one side of my park. I added additional water by recreating some water elements using two stud white black plates covered with trans blue tiles. And then I built a stone bridge that was positioned over the water and over the retaining wall leading down steps into my town square park. On the other side of the building, I also made some modifications. I added a retaining wall to keep the water in and I also have a set of stone steps that leads down to the sidewalk outside the palace cinema. With these two physical connectors, I have one smooth passageway from one end of the palace cinema all the way through the Ninjago city into my town square park. Let's have a look at the back of the Ninjago city building. In the original design, a river flows through the city. But for my building, the river is really just a water element, kind of an internal pond that leads out to the sea. Therefore, I built retaining walls on two sides of the back corner, keeping the water in. 
In addition, I also built a footbridge over the water so that minifigs can access the lift. I had no idea how minifigs were supposed to access the lift in the original design unless they swam over the river. I did make a tiny modification for the top of the Ninjago City building. I added the street light set from the Ninjago City Chase. This adds lights above the sushi restaurant, so logically it gives light to the restaurant, but it also adds to the whole cluttered atmosphere with the signage and the lights on top. In this case, I simply removed two pieces of tiles and placed the street lights directly onto the railing of the top of the building. I hope you enjoyed the modifications I made to the Ninjago City building as well as how I placed it into my brick city in order for it to fit seamlessly. I would love to see your ideas on how you integrated this particular build into your city so please leave me a comment or video response so I can see exactly what you did. If you enjoyed the video, like the video and subscribe to this channel. Head over to smallbrickcity.com to check out even more detailed info and photographs of my Ninjago city as well as my Lego city. Stay tuned for the next video coming really soon.